Alright, hey guys. So in my last video, we were playing around with uh, Osculator uh, because I got this brand new to me, uh, Rocktron MIDI Mate, which I'm going to be using for some show controls. Uh, my desire was that I wanted to be able to send some triggers to Ableton uh, via uh, this foot controller. And as it turns out, uh, Ableton will not take a direct uh, program change message. Uh, so you have to convert that into a MIDI CC. So I, I made a video the other day showing how that's done. So you can take this uh, program change on channel 16. We've got a range of values from 0 to 127, so 128 total values. And those are rerouting to these MIDI CCs, which are unused in the uh, MIDI spec 102 through 110. Um, what I also wanted to be able to do was to control the DeShow profile by a um, snapshot recall. And as it turns out, you can set the venue system to listen to a particular channel. Uh, so I've set it to listen excuse me, to, pro, excuse me, to channel 16. Uh, and the way it works is that the snapshot recall is one-to-one. -one. So program change on channel 16 with a value of zero will uh, correspond to uh, snapshot one, this will be snapshot two, snapshot three, snapshot four, and so on and so forth. So zero through nine, that's my first bank of, excuse me, uh, zero through eight is gonna be my first bank of uh, um, triggers. And then nine through whatever is the second bank and so on and so forth. So I'm probably gonna leave through like 27-ish. Um, for DeShow Profile Q Recall, but that leaves me a ton of other uh, foot pedals, switches, uh, for other types of Q Recall. So you can see I've got this OSC routing down here. I wanted to set up uh, cues for Lighting Desk as well as for my X32 Core. And it's a little bit confusing because uh, my initial attempt at setting up these uh, commands seem to be straightforward. I want to do an OSC route and I want to do, uh, I want to send that to that message to something. Uh, the way it works is you actually have to come in here. You can click, I don't know, new. Let's come over here. Let's make a new one. Bam. Um, let's close that for a second. And when I come in here to my OSC router, you can also get there via parameters. You have to create these targets. So for instance, target one is my iPad, which is not currently connected. Target two is gonna be the ION, which is the lighting desk. Uh, there's the IP address for um, sending commands to the desk, and that's its uh, the port that it's gonna be looking at. Same thing for X32. X32 responds on this uh, 10023 port. Uh, and then that is the IP address of whatever your console is. Um, the next thing is you'll see that down here we've got these routes. And under rewrite address, um, let's see, oops, anyway. Under rewrite address, um, you'll see I've actually got these commands. So like this is actually the command that I want to send to the X32 uh, for the, the fader position for this particular command. And then I've got a go and a stop button for the uh, the, the lighting desk, so that's just like next queue, previous queue kind of thing. And you'll see on my route section here, um, these correspond to our available targets. Uh, and the way this works is this rewrite address, um, you have to insert your command. So for instance, here I've uh, entered the uh, uh, fader position that I wanted it to do. And you can look up the, that list of uh, commands. I'll, I'll include the uh, link to uh, the resource where I got all of those tools uh, in the description. Uh, and then you have to make an argument. So delete this all args thing and throw that thing in there. Um, the arg zero thing, I don't quite understand that fully yet, but that is what's going to allow this command to, to work in the way that you're expecting it to. So right now this is routing to the default, which is which is my uh, iPad. I don't actually need that, so I'm going to kill that. So right now we've got basically these three commands. 
so right now I've got this program change 50 is going to issue an OSC routing command uh, which is currently pointing to the X32 core and we are going to affect this uh, fader position. Uh, similar arguments for the uh, lighting desk down here. And oh, let's, let's get rid of that too. So now when I hit this button, uh, my fader one should jump to zero, which it does. Huzzah! Uh, now that doesn't give me things like crossfade between different things. For that, you still have to use like Paul's live toolbox. Very, very useful. Uh, very useful piece of software. Um, although it's somewhat limited in, in that you have to be in it to issue commands. You can't really do it from other stuff. So. Uh, that's where we're at, and I think my next uh, order of business is to uh, go into the Max for Live patch that allows us to send OSC messages directly from Live, uh, because then we can do like fader positions uh, uh, over time values by using uh, um, uh, clip automation. Um, and then to, to interpolate that data as uh, fader position over time so we can build sort of complex actions that, that need to happen on X32 console as opposed to this just sort of one-off fader movements or scene recall or, or any of the other functions that we may want to do like you know FX4 tap tempo. Uh, yeah, anyway, it took me a little while to figure out but uh, that is how to send an OSC command out of uh, Osculator. Hope this has been somewhat helpful.